Hello everyone and welcome. Welcome to Embracing Your Essence on Lilydale Radio. I am Colleen Vanderzyden, the host of this show, and as you are joining in, please do say hello. I am just going to move things around on my screen here so I know what's going on. So as you are joining in, definitely say hello. Tonight we are going to be talking about more messages from your soul. We talked about the soul's messages last week, and you guys had some amazing questions, and I wrote down a whole bunch of them and so I thought what I would do is just kind of review what I talked about last week real quickly and go into whatever I didn't talk about last week and then answer all these questions and if you have some really good questions you can um, put them in the feed of course as I'm going and my intent as well is to do some mini soul readings too because that's our plan so let me just see who's all here first and then I will get into my details as I do um Oh dear, well, let's see, let's see, we got somebody already going on, is there, there's no good com- communication, um, okay, that's a lot to read right now, Julie, so I'll just say hello for now, and then I shall try to come back to you, um, yeah, you know, family issues are, oh, are tough, aren't they, they really are tough, um, so let's see. Um, sorry. <coughs> um, hello, Julie and Jeremiah and Sherry and Ellen. Um, and everybody, thank you so much for joining me tonight. So before, as I'm waiting for people to log on and recognize that I am here, uh, let's do our details. LilydaleAssembly.org is where you will be at some point seeing all the workshops for this upcoming summer season. Right now you can see the off-season workshops that are being done on Zoom, uh, but the summer ones are still not there yet, but I know they're putting them on, so they're coming. Uh, hopefully, hopefully, cross your fingers, it'll be within the next few days. So LilydaleAssembly.org, official Facebook page, Lilydale Assembly Incorporated. You can find out more about the events there as well. Uh, they are there. And I am Colleen Vanderzyden. As I said, I'm a registered medium at Lilydale, a certified intuitive life coach. And every week on my show, I just like to give you some ideas, some thoughts to help you live your best life. I do want to mention my retreat, the Reimagine Your Life in-person retreat, which is June 2nd through 4th in Lilydale. What we're going to be doing is we're going to be talking about healing the past and letting things go from the past so we can make room so that you can create the life of of your dreams now that hence reimagine your life so we also want to use the past to get clarity on what kind of life you're going to have so we're going to have so much fun at this retreat it's very transformative past life regression is going to happen greg's going to do one i'll do question and answer for personal guidance uh, for one of the sessions we'll create a life adventure board of course that's fun we'll do some work with energy and healing uh dousing uh colors auras we're going to be doing all of that stuff crystals i had a great idea today when i was at the beach i hope it comes back to me again uh, to do down there. Uh, so we are going to be doing this beautiful retreat. And if you're interested in the retreat, you can find out more at my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com. Uh, the retreat is so much fun. Early bird pricing through May 2nd. And after that, the price does go up. Okay, so what else do we have to tell you? Anything else? I don't think so. Let's just get to it. So Last week, we talked about messages from your soul and how the the soul's messages come through. And so what I want to do, I'm just going to say hello to people as I'm scrolling right now, talking to you at the same time. Hello, Deborah, Billy, Susan, uh, Ellen again, and Sherry. And Greg just posted the link to my retreat there so you can see it if you want. Hi, Sam. Um, hi, Sherry. So what I want to do is I want to talk about what, go over kind of what I did last week in case you're new and you didn't hear what I talked about. Um, we get messages from our soul all of the time. We are always getting guidance, but we are usually so caught up in life that we don't pay attention to these messages and maybe we don't recognize them, you know, as a soul's message. So we discussed this a little bit last week and I'll continue it this week as well. Uh, so much of our lives, we have been brought up and conditioned and programmed to believe and live a certain way where we figure out our, our physical existence and we never really learn to check in with ourselves, to check in with our soul to see what our soul's truth is, what our soul's guidance is. We never really figured this out, but what's happening now, because there's so much of an energetic shift happening in the world, so many people are recognizing there is more to life than our physical existence. And by that, I mean, there's more to life than our uh, our career success. There's more to life than um, being having approval 
of other people. And so we are at, at this point in our lives, so many people are really searching for a deeper sense of meaning and connection and purpose. And we find this when we strengthen that connection to our souls. When we recognize, number one, that we have a soul. And my uh, understanding of what the soul is, is that our soul is a part of us, of course, right? But it is also a part of the divine universal energy. So in other words, the soul is not just us, who we are in this physical body, but our soul within us is also beyond that. It is the bigger picture of the divine love, the universal energy that is available for everyone. So this is very important for us to understand because as humans, we can feel alone, really lost, and feel as though no one gets us, no one understands us, right? But when we reconnect with our soul, and get into that space, we are connecting to the divine limitless abundance that is available to us all over the place. And my phone is doing something weird, so hold on. I don't know what's going on. Um, and my phone is connected to Blog Talk Radio, and so apparently I'm having a problem with it, but whatever. It's just more important that I'm here with you, isn't it? <laughs> so, what I want to do, as I said, we were just going through this. When we we feel like we need something more. It is our soul calling us. Our soul is trying to connect with us. Our soul wants to help us have that life with more meaning, more purpose, more joy. The soul doesn't communicate through thinking and figuring out and analyzing. It communicates through feelings. You might feel like something is missing. You might feel like you need more to your life. You might feel drawn to certain ideas and you might feel like you need to do things differently. And these are some of the things I talked about last week, so I'm not going to go heavy duty into those. Our souls also, when we are in touch with our soul, there is a certain feeling that is there. And actually what I want to do is take a minute and have you kind of feel that soul and I did this a couple of weeks ago but it'll probably be different tonight because spirit tells me to do it differently so we'll see what I do but not long just a minute or so so just close your eyes for a second and just take a nice deep breath so you get to relax just relax just be here in the moment and don't be worried about anything so just be here just breathe and relax and our intention for this minute is for us to connect to our soul and feel what it feels like when we are connected to the soul. So I want you to think about someone you love, an animal, a person, someone you love, where you love with all your heart. And also, if you like, you can also think of a time when you were totally immersed in some kind of a creative venture. Maybe you were working in your garden and you were in that moment. You were so in that moment. Or maybe you were doing some uh, making music or art and you were so in that moment. So either one of these can work. So think of someone you love or think of a time when you're totally in that flow, immersed in that creativity. Okay, You can put them together and do both if you want. And just breathe that in and really feel how that felt. How does it feel when you love someone so much and they love you? And how does it feel when you're totally immersed in something? You're just in that moment and you're creating and you're being and you're so present. Within both of those scenarios, there is this sense of expansion of your energy where you're in that spiritual that flow you're in the flow of energy life is good everything feels wonderful you feel wonderful and just breathe into that now pay attention to how you're feeling how does your body feel how does your mind feel how do you feel emotionally pay attention to all of that some of you who are really sensitive and empathic may be feeling maybe some tingling or pressure in your head, okay, or your hands. You might be feeling some of that. Whatever you're feeling is perfect. Now take one more deep breath and just intend to remember this feeling.
And then you can just come back to your body here. You can open your eyes and get back here. That was just a very brief, very, very brief touch into what it feels like when you're in your soul's energy. Because when you truly love someone, you know, uh, an animal as well, that works. And you know how it is. We love some, our little, our little cats or something, you know, we love them and our hearts expand. And when our hearts expand, our energy expands and we are living from our soul's presence. Same thing when we are in a creative flow, you know, I used to do some watercolor painting and it would just be like channeling through me. And it was awesome. I knew what to do next, even though I really don't know what to do next. You know, intellectually, I'm not an artist, but I knew what to do next because I was in that flow. Whenever we're doing something like this, so if we know what this feels like and we keep practicing this and playing with it and touching in intentionally to that soul's energy, it will make it so much easier to pick up on the soul's messages because we'll have that feeling. Okay, you notice that feeling did not have fear attached. There was no fear, there was no worry with it. It was being, totally being in the moment, being in your soul. Now I'm gonna see what some of you said. Can you feel a sense of completion or want less too? <laughs> yes, 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 Ellie, yes. Um, Debbie ran a guest house in Lilydale for a season. How fun is that? Hi, Zeno. Uh, Pamela, calm and satisfied. <laughs> Sherry said her dog was snoring in the background like crazy. How fun is that? And it is so calming, isn't it? It's calm and grounding. Um, yeah, I love it. It's There is something about this. Um, so Deborah Ann, um, she just said her soul has been completely broken and depleted due to family issues. I've tried everything to put the pieces back together to no avail. And I am so sorry you're dealing with this. Um, I would suggest doing this kind of exercise where, where you believe that you have a soul and that it is connected. And if we do this, you can get into that space as, um, Gail says total trust. She felt that. Um, hi, Arlene. Debbie said light and joyful. Um, and Courtney is beating again. It keeps her busy. Love it. Sending love and healing. So here's the thing, um, Deborah, with this. When we have issues in our family, when we have big things going on in our lives, when we take a moment to sit and be our mind starts kind of going. And that could bring in more worries and more concerns. So what you'll want to try is breathing and feeling that love as much as possible. There is something within you, there's a part of you, that the love is still there. You have not lost it. I know that life has not been easy for you. And there, this is, um, there's still a spark of your soul inside of you with the love and the energy. And this is interesting, Deborah. I'm, I guess I'm going into a semi reading with you right now because I did colors last week and I wanna do colors again with you. I want a mix of colors. I want the blue with you because it is a calming color, but it's also a communication color. And I'm not wanting you to communicate with people outside of yourself. I want you to communicate with your soul. So I feel you sitting with some blue energy around you. Now, when I talk about something like this, you can envision it or you can literally have something blue in your hand. You might want a blue crystal, actually. Something along the lines of angel light might be fun. And you can hold that, en that energy, that blue color, and just meditate on it with the intention of connecting to your soul and your love. It is there, okay? It's going to take some time Okay, and obviously the next thing to say would be if you need help from a counselor, then I recommend that maybe you get that if you're not getting it, because a counselor can really help you uh, release some of those uh, emotions and uh, pick the pieces back up again. Okay, so for you, Deborah, I really do see you meditating. I do want angel light. 
it's a light blue stone and it's it's so beautiful and it's for the communication oh yeah two colors thank you one was the communication which is the blue for you a lighter blue not a darker blue a lighter blue and then the other thing I was feeling was of course some green color because green is healing and so I do want some green around you as well for you getting outside being in nature is going to be very healing you also have to allow yourself to heal Sometimes when we've had big traumas and tragedies in our life, um, we believe that we will never heal again. We believe that we will never be whole again. We believe we will never love again. And that's just where people can be during that time. But this doesn't mean you will never heal again, that you will never love again, that you will never be happy again. Because it is there. Your soul is still there and your soul will bring that joy back to you. But you have to give yourself a little break on it and not pressure yourself like I need to feel it right now. But recognize that you're going through a tough time and give yourself compassion. That is your soul speaking to you as well. So think about those ideas, Deborah, and see if that can help you get back into your energy. Um, <clears throat> Bambi says losing your, ch your child to suicide breaks off a piece of your soul that will never grow back. I don't expect it to, but I move on with love and gratitude to honor her and her siblings. And that is, is very, um, that's a very soul way of looking at things, Bambi. And I'm so sorry you experienced that. That's, that is a tough one, isn't it? And, and it definitely affects us at the soul level. But remember the soul level encompasses everything your soul encompasses the divine universal energy your soul encompasses your child's energy as well you know we are all one our energies are all connected so that is in there with you yes okay so I, I got a little sidetracked there but here we are we'll go back I just want to repeat some of the things I said last week I wanted you to feel how your how you would feel when you're connected in with your soul so that again when the messages come in you recognize them now remember the soul's messages can be nudges just little subtle nudges they could be a passing thought which I equate with intuition or that gut feeling thing as well um, you are welcome Deborah Ann and Sometimes our soul gives us messages through repetitive thoughts. You know, we might see those, uh, an idea can just keep replaying in our heads over and over and over. And maybe we try to set it away, but it keeps coming back. That might be a soul's message. Same thing with numbers or songs. We talked about those last week. And 1111, so many people see 1111 at our house. So we do 1111, make a wish. Um, so you could have repeated numbers songs words uh you might also get uh repeated messages by seeing animals i think i mentioned last week um rebecca says i feel guilty trying to heal yeah isn't it interesting rebecca and i know that there are other people who have also struggled with that um sometimes you know it's it is wild isn't it because it's kind of like we say we want to be happy but then we self-sabotage or we we'd rather be complaining about something it's kind of the same when we we want to heal because ugh, there's so many things i could say about this but let me go to if we've lost somebody and we want to heal from that and move forward sometimes people feel badly about doing that feel guilty as though that means somehow that we're forgetting the person we love who has passed which we're not we just have to integrate that loss into a new reality life will never go back so it could be that thing sometimes too trying to feel guilty with healing it's it it goes with the, the sense that we might feel selfish and for women especially taking care of ourselves making decisions that are right for us because that's what we want or need feel selfish so if we are trying to heal from whatever it's taking care of ourselves and we feel selfish so then that guilt steps in it's not our fault this is one of those programming things you know women are supposed to do these things we're supposed to sacrifice we're not supposed to uh speak our truth we're not supposed to take care of ourselves we're supposed to do everybody else's needs first so isn't it interesting so that may be part of it so those yes survivor's guilt um is what laura says right um it is amazing i try to believe i deserve to be happy and you do deserve to be happy rebecca um everybody deserves to be happy 
We deserve to live the life we want to live. That's why we're here. <clears throat> That's why we're alive. And our souls, back to the souls, our souls are here to guide us, to lead us to the right places so that we can recognize we deserve to be happy. We deserve to love ourselves. We deserve to heal. We deserve to have a life of meaning and purpose. We deserve it. And so your soul will speak to you to guide you and take you to the to the next step. I can't tell you how many times somebody has called me and said, I don't know. I got on Facebook. I'm never on Facebook. And I just, you happen to pop up talking to me. You happen to pop up. And so I knew I needed to call you. And I'm like, isn't that amazing? So the soul will show us messages through synchronicities. You know, if you're never on Facebook and all of a sudden you pop on and here I am and you're going, oh, she's kind of fun to watch and listen to, you know, I could be helpful. So there may be a reason why you're here. I truly believe that everything that happens in our lives brings us to our soul. Every single thing. That's the purpose of everything. So we can recognize who we truly are at the soul level. Your soul can communicate with you as well with dreams or symbols or visions. Okay, I don't think I talked about that last week. So if you want to increase the messages in your dreams, set an intention before you go to bed that you want to remember your dreams, that you want to get guidance through your dreams, and definitely have paper and pen next to the bed because we always think we're going to remember our dreams. And then, um, and then, you know, in the middle of the night we remember it, and then we wake up in the morning, I had a dream, but I can't remember it. So write it down right away. And it might not work the first time you do this, but I have had several people tell me that they've been doing this with regularity, requesting that their souls guide them through their dreams and through the symbols or visions, whatever comes in at night, especially because, you know, we're in a different state, a little bit more receptive in some ways to receiving that guidance. And these people have told me that they're getting the messages. They're having the dreams. They're having to interpret some, but some are so obvious they know exactly what it means. So if you have a dream and you're not, you don't understand it right away, just write down everything. Write down the details, what you saw, what you experienced, how you felt. Lots of times in our dreams, uh, we'll see something and it's, it represents some aspect of ourselves. Okay. So, you know, you might see your friend Bob over there and Bob is here to help you. And you're thinking, well, that's weird because Bob doesn't usually help me with these things. Well, what does Bob represent about you? What aspect of Bob is similar to you in some way? What part of you does Bob represent? So it's kind of fun to play around with dreams and dream interpretation. And, and with that, um, you, it will be amazing as you play with this more as the soul can bring that information through to you. And we all know sometimes we'll go to bed and we have a problem and, and we've tried thinking it out and worrying about it. And then the next morning we wake up and the answer's right in front of us. This happens at night. So our soul can communicate with us very easily at night. So if you see a symbol or, um, or feel a symbol, but don't know what it is, you don't know what it means, just write it down and you might see it later. Somebody last week I saw in the comments said that the bedspread pattern back here, he had seen that pattern earlier in the day and then he saw it here and he wanted to know what it meant. I'm not sure what it meant and it may have just been a confirmation that he needed to be here to recognize there was some kind of connection between the pattern you saw earlier and the pattern during the show. I don't know. But write it down so you remember it because later you could be driving someplace and see it. Same thing with visions. You know, you want to write down what you see, what it looks like, and how you feel with that. Now, back to how you felt when we were doing that little brief thing where you could tie, kind of touch into your soul a little bit. You notice it didn't come in with fear. We didn't have fear there. Our messages from our soul will come in very factually. It's just, there it is, piece of information. So when you know this and you're in that feeling, you'll know it's truly a message from the soul. We also talked about, I'm going to check the comments and say, hello, your bedspread pattern is, wait a minute, is my living room rug pattern. Isn't that interesting? Uh, um, Lynn says, talking about dream, I dream about having Kundalini rising, I was going up and down, and I asked her, why did my hair and pop, and I wake up, any idea what that means by any chance? 
um, well, the Kundalini rises and, and it would go up into your head. And if you had a pop, um, I would assume that's clearing your crown chakra. And if you wake up with some ideas, that means you're probably connected. That's just a very brief uh, possible interpretation for you. Um, uh, Sherry says she doesn't dream at all. I don't remember my dreams very much, but I'm getting, they always get through if they need to get through. Uh, but there we go. Heather, my aunt who passed hugged me in a strange dream the other day. Could that be real? I really needed if it was. I know it was a dream and she's gone. Heather, the thing, what do you want to... There's a couple things here. One, when spirit visits us from the other side while we're sleeping, it's we call it a visitation. And a visitation dream will feel so real, just so real, that it's as though they're right there. Even though you know she's gone, it will feel real. If you remember all of the details of it, it's likely a visitation. And of course, I would assume that if your aunt hugs you, that you were happy to see her, that you probably felt safe. She was letting you know she loves you. She was letting you know she's there for you. And and yes, so it could be real. Absolutely, it could be real. And a, a message from her. Isn't it amazing? I tell you, spirits and the soul always finds a way to get through. Uh, da -da, somebody just said something. You, uh, Sherry, I believe you can also communicate in your dreams with people who are still living that you want to speak with but can't. Oh, Sherry, yes. So you can do that in dreams. You can also do that in waking life. Okay. So say you're having, okay, I got to be careful how I say this, but say you're having a problem with somebody. Okay. For example, I have someone right now in my family who's not speaking to me, right? So obviously I'm not going to have a conversation with that person, but what I can do is send a soul to soul message. And what that means is I go into my soul and with the intention of sending a message from my soul to the other person's soul. Now, here's the part you have to be very careful about. We do not want to manipulate the person or anything like that. We want to send a positive message. We want to send them love. We want to send them light. We want to send them positive energy so that they can live their best lives as they can. The human part in us wants to go like this. Okay, I'm going to send him a message and tell him how much I love him. And then maybe he's going to come and talk to me and we can fix this problem. That's the human part where I have now put a meaning on it that is beyond a pure meaning of sending love, light, and positive energy. Okay, so that's the tricky part. So if we are having a problem with someone and we want to fix the relationship, which we can do energetically. This is an energetic process. We send a soul to soul relationship um, communication. We send a communication, but we must be, and this is a definitely must, be very careful about how we do this. We want to come at this from love without manipulating, trying to control, or trying to make things happen the way we want them to come out. You see what I'm doing here? We send for the best. What this is, is from our soul's perspective, is that we are stepping into our highest self when we're living from our soul, when we're communicating from our soul. That is our highest self. So we are going to communicate with the love. We're not going to fall into the human manipulation and control thing. Okay. It takes some commitment on our part to recognize that another person has their own path, that we have no control over what they're doing and how they're living, that we may never be able to fix this, but we still choose to send them positive energy from our soul. So that's something we can do. Yes. Anyway, off on a tangent there as usual. Um, yes, there we go. That's perfect. Um, okay, hold on. Backtracking. I got a lot of comments. Um, is a visitation dream the same thing as a lucid dream? Not necessarily, although you can be lucid in a visitation dream. Lots of times we think about lucid dreaming as we are uh, doing something to create a result in our dream. That's the definition I've used is lucid dreaming. We're doing something to create something. You know, in our mind, we're going, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to do this and I'm going to do that. Definitely a visitation can be lucid, however. 
Interesting, right? Um, Laura, before you go to bed at night to remember your dreams, just set the intention you're going to remember your dreams. Greg tells me this all the time. So do that. Visitations are amazing, aren't they, Charlotte? Yeah, I've had a couple. I had one with my dog once after he'd passed. It was awesome. Um, ah, and my dreams always include a lot of white, white houses, white walls, sometimes a lot of white outside. Many of us associate white with a spiritual color as well, purity. You know, pure love, that kind of thing. Um, white is definitely that kind of like, you know, when you see uh, an aura or you see a halo in some of the old paintings, lots of times they were white. Um, so I always associate it with the divine. So that is interesting. Uh, Darlene says, during the day, if I'm anxious or confused, breathe deeply, slow my thoughts and feelings down. Then later I realize my day fell right into place. So important, isn't it, Darlene? being intentional, being in the present moment. So say you are struggling with something, not Darlene, but everybody, say you're struggling with something and you remember what I said about breathing and connecting with your soul. Envision someone you love, feel that love, be in that creative moment, that immersed feeling where you're totally in the moment. Breathe and intend to touch in with that feeling again. You're back in your soul and what will happen is you're in a problem you're going to have more clarity. It will be so much easier to handle the problem because you're going to be looking at it from your soul's perspective. It really works. And it's so simple that I think sometimes we just forget about it because it's so simple to just slow down and take a minute or two and breathe and connect. And there we go. It just seems like, oh, nah. Or we say we're too busy, which is just an excuse to not do it. So... What happens if we do that and in a dream we see them run away from it? If it's a dream, there's a meaning attached to that okay i i would have to have more information on a dream to go into that a little bit more but yeah there's a meaning um amy sees light as well how fun is that yeah awesome okay so connecting with your soul is also self-awareness right i mean we talked did talk about that last piece last week so you want to know what you feel like when you're stressed and overwhelmed or fear-based. Because if you know what you feel like there, when you're in your soul's energy and it doesn't feel like that, you'll go, oh, wait, 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 there's a difference. This is my fear-based energy here. This is my soul-based energy here. And if you know you're in your, your fear-based, breathe, get in your soul's energy, and there you go. You're going to feel better. So easy. Same thing with the body. Your body is always giving you messages through your, from your soul, always giving you messages. So when we are in the soul's flow, we feel open, we feel confident, our energy expands out. You know, um, when we are stuck in the external, our fear, our worry, our energy constricts. We kind of do this. But when we're like this, we're open. So if you know you're stuck in fear, worry, stress, etc., make a point of lifting your chest up opening up your energy and sending the connection out that kind of will counterbalance the stress and the fear your body posture will help you get back into your soul's energy it's amazing self-awareness also includes how we think of course if we know we get stuck in self-doubt and we hear that inner critic going on talking us out of stuff because we can't do it we're not good enough and stuff but if we know that that's what we might do on occasion. We know that's not the soul's energy because the soul's not going to tell you those things. The soul is not going to say, oh, you're so stupid. I can't believe you didn't do that. The soul doesn't do that. The soul is a voice of love, kindness, compassion, peace, joy. It is not going to tell you you're stupid. Um, let's see. <laughs> Interesting. So, Ellie, you send light and love to my estranged relative and they run from it in my dreams. I would say, Ellie, then, that the message to you is that they do not, they are not receptive to your love and light. They're just not receptive to it. So, uh, <clears throat> if you are sending pure love and light and they don't want it, that is their choice. And if you see them running away, it could be they're not receptive. Or it could be mean that you think they're not receptive whichever one feels best for you. Laura, is connecting to your soul kind of like those gut feelings you get? Absolutely. Because when we're connected with our soul, we're connected with our intuition. Our soul is connected to everything, which means we have access to everything, which means we have intuition all over the place, right? So yes, you get that gut feeling. That means you are in your soul's energy. Yes, it's amazing, isn't it? It does make so much sense, doesn't it, Pamela? Fear versus calm. 
And the more we understand what it feels like when we're in the soul's energy, the easier it becomes to continue to be in that soul's energy. It's just so much easier that way. You are welcome, Allie. Yeah, right. Greg just said pretty much the same thing. The dream may be telling you that the problem is not with you. They're simply not receptive, right? Yeah, it absolutely could be that. So what we want to do to encourage your connection, right? We want to encourage that connection to your soul is, and then I'm going to do some little mini readings. So if you have things, um, Qigong can definitely help you connect to your soul's energy. Any kind of spiritual practice like that definitely helps. So we want to encourage this connection. So number one, Awareness of who you are, self-awareness, who you are and how you typically respond so that you can, again, figure out what's the soul and what's not. You want to take some time for meditation or stillness. Uh, take some time to be in a creative flow and that can be... That can be being in the garden and doing something there. It can be being out in nature can be the stillness. This doesn't mean you have to sit there and meditate all day long, okay? Um, so you, you need moments of stillness though, okay? Because it gets us out of our heads. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but I can really get caught up there sometimes. So we wanna get out of it. We have to have some moments of stillness. You want to be, to keep connecting to your soul, be mindful of how you live. Be intentional about what you're doing, what you're thinking, what you're believing, all of that. You want to be mindful. You want to pay attention to how you're feeling. Okay, so much of intuitive development is based in self-awareness. Okay, self-awareness. So we can tell when the soul is coming through versus that fear-based thought, right? So we can tell. So you, the more you learn about yourself and how you live, what you believe, etc., the more you'll be able to connect with your soul, okay? It's funny because sometimes people are like, well, just give me a really good exercise and so I can just step into it. Well, I gave you the little one. You breathe, you intend, you feel. Feel, feel. The soul feels. The soul does not think. The soul feels. You need to feel the love that's coming through. Question and be curious. Um, be curious about why you do or don't listen to yourself. Why don't you listen sometimes? You know what you feel it. You know you're supposed to leave this partner. You know you do, but then 20 years later, here you are, you still are. You know, why do you not listen to your soul? And usually it's because that inner voice, the inner critic voice is talking you out of it because it's going to cause so many problems or you're going to hurt somebody's feelings or there's going to be too many changes, da, 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 da. But we want your soul to be making the decisions. Along that line, we want to do things that feed your soul. What feeds your soul? What keeps you happy? What keeps you motivated? What keeps you feeling like you're in a flow where life is going like it should be? You know, what, what is that? What can you do to feed your soul? Okay, so let's see. I'm going to check some comments. I'm going to look and see what I didn't talk about. We want to be in the soul's flow, right? So that's the feeling. That's the feeling we want to connect with. Trust is very important as well because, okay, so if you can believe that you have a soul, right? And if you can believe that you have a soul that is there to guide you, Okay, that the soul is who you truly are. If you can believe that, then you make this next choice to trust that the soul will guide you. Okay, whenever I'm planning a radio show or a workshop and I'm, I'm trying to figure it out, you know, in my head and stuff, and I know, I know 100% that spirit is going to get the message through to me. It will come through my soul. Okay, I got to talk about that. It'll come through my soul and I'll know what I'm supposed to be talking about. So I trust that I'm going to get the information. I can get that information because my soul is connected and I believe I am guided. Okay, so if you can believe that, even if you don't believe it 100%, but you do your best to believe it, your soul will help you. So our souls, a couple of people asked questions last week. I, wrote, I copied all these questions down because you guys had great questions last week. So somebody said something. Hold on, I have to search for a sec. Oh yeah, uh, Elise, my question is how do I discern between my soul versus my guides and angels, right? As humans, we like labels and we like separation, right? 
we think okay I've got this guide over here this guide over here I got an angel over here I got my my people who have passed over here uh, I got my soul here and I got me here so that's like you know ten things all around us but what if we're all the same thing what if we're all the same thing our soul and angels and guides we are the we are one okay now as a human myself I do like the idea that I have a guide that comes through and speaks through me. I really like that idea. Now, yes, in essence, I am one with that guide, but being able to externalize that guide a little bit does make it a little easier for me to connect. Okay, so the energy from the guide comes through my soul and out my mouth <laughs> with my words. So as long as the messages we're getting are positive, helpful, inspirational, uh, they come through very factually, then we, whatever we're getting, wherever we're getting it from, it's all good, as long as it's nice like that. Uh, mindful moments, ooh, I like that, Pamela. Uh, somebody just said, I'm learning to be still. I gotta backtrack because this thing is going on. Uh, it's scrolling on me without me scrolling. Um, Sherry says, what you just said was exactly how I feel. I would like to be in a different place, but I do what is expected of me and not what I want. Right? Right? So many of us are there, have been there, will be there. If we make an intention, a point of connecting with our soul, and doing it with regularity, not just a one day, you know, one day I do it and then I hope my life is fine from now on. It becomes a way of life in a way where we check in with our soul. What does my soul want? What does my soul say I need? Okay, if we're there helping other people and doing what's expected of us, if it feels right to us and we want to do it, then fine. But if we know we want to do something else, if we know we're doing it just because somebody else expects it from us and we do it anyway, then we are in a way betraying the message from our soul. Okay, so we're kind of not listening. And granted, we live in a physical life and we have physical relationships and interactions that are difficult and challenging. And sometimes it just seems like it's easier to just give in, right? The problem is if we keep giving in, it's like we chip away at our soul's energy and we lose some of its power. But if we make one, one little teeny little choice to stand in our power, to honor our soul, to feed our soul, if we make one step that, in that direction, the next one becomes easier. And the soul is always helping. So it's not like your soul is saying to you, um, okay, you did that wrong. You, are, you, you shouldn't have done it that way. Your soul is not going to do that. Your soul is going to keep coming back to give you the message that if this is what you want to be doing, then we need to get doing it. So you'll keep getting those messages over and over. We know, so many of us, we know when we're doing something that our soul doesn't want us to do. We know when we do that. You know, it's, the, it's your conscience in a way, right? We know. Okay. We also know that sometimes we do it anyway. We don't honor ourselves. We don't honor our soul. We don't honor the guidance we're getting. But if we know we're doing that, then we can also go the other way and choose a different direction. Little steps at a time. Just little steps at a time. Sometimes we think, oh, I, 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 I totally screwed that up and I'm not listening to my soul, so it's over. It's kind of like di dieting, right? Oh, you know, I, I ate great, I ate great, I ate great. And then, oh, and then I had this. Oh, I guess my diet's done. Why would we do that? It's just one little step at a time. And the soul is full of compassion. So the soul is always going to go, let's just try it again. It's all good. And they'll let you know. Um... Let's see, Molly, I'm trying to find out what my soul's flow is. How can I find out? Okay, Molly, let's go with you. So Molly, your soul's flow is when you are living in your best authenticity. And this is kind of actually cool because yeah, I'm talking about this, the flow, but and you mentioned flow, but I'm seeing a flow, which is always fun for me to see something like this. And I expect with that, um, what I'm seeing is that you actually very much do enjoy being outside. I, I'm seeing like trees and, and creeks and those kinds of things all around you. So there's that. But the soul's flow is everyone is uh, has certain qualities 
that are important in their lives. I started doing soul readings last year. Spirit told me to do soul readings. So now I offer that as well as mediumship readings. And they're so much fun to do because, you know, I do my mini soul readings here, but to have a full 45 minutes talking about you and your qualities of your soul and um, how these qualities have uh, brought certain situations into your life so you can reclaim those qualities or make them stronger. So it's kind of fun. And then we talk about life situations and stuff. So Molly, for you, when I see that nature, I also get this huge, beautiful sense of giving with you. Like, I know you're a giver. I know you're the... you highly empathic too. I know you're the kind of person that reaches to other people and really wants to help them to the point sometimes where you forget about your own stuff, but I know that's what it is. So part of your soul flow is the giving. Okay. Part of your soul flow with the giving comes, of course, love that you want to do the right thing. There's responsibility within it as well. And for you, You've been a pretty good thinker for most of your life, and part of your lesson is to learn to feel from your soul and just feel things. Feel when you feel, <laughs> bad sentence, feel when you feel like you're in the flow. Woo. <laughs> channeling land you guys no sentence structure here for me so there's something about you wanting to really feel into things you know I one thing I've been talking about a lot with clients lately is checking in with themselves which I'm really talking about checking in with the soul <clears throat> checking in with yourself before you make a decision check in with yourself before you eat before you you walk outside before you get dressed in the morning we check in all the time but we're not aware of it so we become more intentional about how do I really feel right now that's really going to help so Molly too also for you you know because you have that giving that loving part part, part of your soul there you have that part um, there is also this sense of you needing to make sure you're turning that back on yourself that you are giving to yourself as well that would be feeding the soul, you know, allowing yourself to uh, do whatever you need to do or want to do to feel most like you, where you're in that that creative flow or where you're in the, the moment where life is wonderful. Okay, so I went kind of all over the map with you for that bit there, Molly, but maybe some of that made sense. It seems to be feeling and coming back to you. Hmm, interesting. Oh, yes. Sherry, I feel that way with my partner. I feel like I need to move on. But I'm just not being, yeah, I, being satisfied. Yeah. Somebody asked me last year, I remember, something along the lines of, how can I follow my soul's guidance when I know it's going to hurt people or hurt a person? And people who are sensitive and empaths, and I know a lot of you are, we never want to hurt anybody, even if we do need to move on, right? So sometimes we stick around a little too long because we are not sure how to move on. And the thing is, of course, as time goes, your soul is going to get louder and louder with this message that maybe it's time to move on until something happens where finally you do. Sometimes I'll say to clients, do you want to spend the rest of your life like this? Sometimes that's a good motivator to finally go, okay, I do have to do something. You know, many of us have spent a lot of time waiting for someone to change and they are not going to change, you know? So I know it's really hard for us, isn't it, to, to not feel like we're being selfish because we want more out of life, but we deserve more. We can have anything we want. We can connect with everything. So we have to honor ourselves. And Sherry, I've been there as well. <laughs> so I, I understand. And it's not an easy place to be in. Uh, yes. Uh, da, 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 what feeds your soul? Yes. Prompts me to think of Sarah McLaughlin's song, Who Will Save Your Soul? Yes. Isn't that great? <sighs> yeah, I know, Julie. Hard to apply to family issues when they have outbursts. And my intention is to be love and peace. And you had commented earlier, way, way, way back, like the first comment that popped up. And I, there was a lot there. So I didn't read the whole thing, but I, I understand there's some family issues. So, Julie, um, practical matters, of course, if you live with them, um, that makes it more challenging, right? If you don't live with them, 
practically. Yeah, you do have other choices in terms of not spending time with them or as much as time as possible. I don't know your situation, but for you, Julie, <laughs> I'm doing colors again. Okay. For you, Julie, this is kind of fun, actually, because I am seeing purple around you. And if you've watched me before, you know that purple is the sign of the color of spiritual energy, spiritual guidance. This is where you're going to be, uh, this color, the color of purple is the space of your soul where you know you are spiritually connected and guided. You have the love coming through. You do have the the peace and everything around you. Um, when we have people around us who are challenging, shall we say, when they are challenging, we do need to make a plan, a physical plan as to how to handle them. We need to understand they're not going to change. We need to understand that no matter um, what they say to us, we we don't have to take it on. We don't have to believe it. We don't have to, we don't have to get entangled in it where we have an emotional reaction. If we can recognize they are the way they are, and that's the way it is, and just go, that's the way it is, then we don't have to get upset about it. Okay, so that may be a practical suggestion that may help. I know I've had to do that myself um, um, in the past with a couple people where I just had to go. Ooh, it's just the way it is so it's you know but once I started doing that I felt better and then I could still maintain my peace it also helped me too when I um, recognize that they have their own path and I have my path and they can be who they are and I can accept that that's who they are but that doesn't mean that my path has to necessarily be crossing with their paths that I can go in a different direction Okay, I don't know if that helps at all, Julie, but your you part of part of you, Julie, is with that you do have a very strong spiritual connection. By the way, I don't know if you're you're working working on it, playing with it to make it stronger, but it's it's very it's natural. That's the word I want: natural and innate. Um, there is this sense of you believing, truly believing, having faith that there is. Uh, guidance there that there is something there and it's very strong um, so stay in that space as much as you can oh good idea stay in that space as much as you can <laughs> I'm obviously getting channeling because that will help you uh, handle what's happening around you um, Carrie says I keep seeing repeating numbers threes fours fives one six nines every day all day long Oh, how interesting. Do you have a numerology book? You might want to check some numerology to see what these numbers are. You might also want to check the patterns. You know, uh, like, do you always see, like, for example, do you always see three, then four, then five? Do you just see variations of three, four, five? Or, you know, how the patterns go? Um, and that might be fun to explore. That might be really fun to explore. So numerology book, check that out or online, of course. I'm old, so I talk about books. Um, yeah, don't absorb their stuff. Exactly. Yeah, Suzanne. Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Hold on. I'm coming back to you, Suzanne. Um, oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, sorry, Lisa Marie, friend, blocked. I'm just writing it down so I can come back to you. Time's up. Oh, I got a few minutes still. Um, I wanted to go. Okay, let's see. Oh, so many things, you guys. Debbie, if you honor yourself and want to leave your partner, but you would have to give up everything to support them so you can be on your own, it seems that is a lot for the soul to ask of you to start all over, basically, right? Yes, that is true sometimes it's worth it. So that's something only you could decide if it's worth it. I know a previous relationship, I ended up supporting him for a bit of time and I had to because I, need, I needed my own stuff. I needed my space. Um, Suzanne, I'm also an empath and are surrounded by challenging family members also. It's exhausting. So important to protect your energy, you guys. And I think I talked about this a few shows ago. I don't know. Doing, I'm doing an empath workshop this summer. I think it's July 23rd, maybe, um, and in Lilydale, um, called Empath Survival Skills. And so important for empaths to protect your energy. Okay, and literally, um, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. Uh, I would put my arms out like this and make this circle around myself 
and say that these are my, uh, this is my bubble of energy. Uh, anything that is negative or uh, disempowering cannot come in my energy field. I'd say it positively though. I surround myself with positive energy and only positive energy can come into my energetic field. I would do that every morning and do the motion because the motion gives us an idea of where our boundary line is, our energetic boundary line is, and say it in positive words, okay? So I surround myself with positive energy, and only positive energy can come into my energetic space, okay? This makes a huge difference. You're setting it in motion. You're, you know that you can do this. Uh, people won't bother you as much. Uh, you'll be happier. Try it. I, I, it's amazing. Um, da, 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 da. do you think everyone has a soulmate or could have a soulmate, Deborah Ann? Um, I think my opinion on soulmates, which may or may not be popular, is that soulmates are the people who help, uh, help us learn the most. Okay. Um, I do believe that my son is probably a soulmate because he's been very trying and challenging. Um, I am not a big proponent of soulmate partners. Like, oh, he's my soulmate. Da, 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 da. I'm not a big proponent of that because I know that we have had many soul connections throughout our lives and that we have many, everybody is a soulmate in some way. So we've had many connections. So I'm not a big proponent on that. This does not mean that I don't believe we can, I, I do believe, let me do it in positive words. This means I do believe as well that we can have a relationship that's just so wonderful, so tight, so, so perfect for us in so many ways. And I definitely can see how we would call that a soulmate relationship. Okay. But I also believe we have more than one soulmate. So there, I don't know if that helped you or not, but that's an interesting, that's my belief system. You believe whatever you want to believe. This is your soul and your life. You get to believe whatever you want. Um, your online class on your book again. Oh, my Courageous Leo group coaching. Uh, yeah, the Courageous Leo group coaching will open. Um, well, actually it's open now. People can register now, but it'll start in January. So it's an eight week, uh, private coaching group, small group of seven, eight people. It's amazing, transformative people. It creates miracles. It really creates miracles. And it's, it is based on the information in my book, but it's also tailored to each individual person and their unique needs. So I give each person coaching um, based on whatever is happening. So yes, that um, go to my website and you can find it there on my coaching page. Um, ah, Debbie, I stay away from negativity now and I'm trying to not carry everyone else's baggage. Yes, yes. Um, yes, exactly, Sam. Twin flames are real. I learned a lot from him and it nearly broke me. And I'm not convinced on twin flames either because people say that that means they're from the same soul and granted we're all one, but I think it's a human construct, so I don't grab that one, but you do whatever you want with that. Um, how do we break from them? Zena, I've been waiting for you. I know, I, and I didn't talk to Lisa about her friend who blocked her either. Um, so Zena, let's go with Zena for a sec. Oh, I know. So I'm gathering, Zena, that you have somebody in your life that there's such a strong connection, but uh, for practical purposes, it's just not working anymore, right? And here's the thing with you, Zena, your energy. Ah. Oh, I love your energy, um, not just because I love your name, but I love your energy. Your energy is so, there's a joy within you. There's an, a sense of uh, excitement. And I don't mean that in an over the top, like, bah! you know, crazy, but it's, it's this feeling of um, enjoying things, enjoying life, that kind of excitement there. Sometimes when we have a strong bond with someone who is, um, you know, we just we just want to be together, but they're bad for us. And I mean, they're bad for us for whatever reasons. You know, maybe they just never grew up. We'll make it a simple one. Maybe they never grew up. And so uh, they don't understand about being a responsible adult, right? And they aren't growing up. And because of their being irresponsible, you're having financial problems or you're having, you're feeling like you're enabling them or it's a codependent kind of relationship or something like that. Um, and we recognize it's not going to change, but our soul is going to be like, okay, 
you know, you're sacrificing yourself, you know, and this is, it's tricky. It's so tricky because when there is that strong bond and connection and we feel the love and we can see the good in them, which I know you do, you see the good in them. The hazard for us is that we can end up literally sacrificing our lives waiting for someone else to get better or putting up with somebody who's never going to get better. And here's what may help. Recognizing again that their path is theirs and yours is yours. Okay. If somebody is uh, stuck in um, some kind of an addiction and and even though it's a disease and an illness and, or whatever the official term is these days, um, they obviously don't have control over this, but it's some part within them, if there's some part within them that is doing the best they can to move forward, then we want to help. But if they, they can't or don't, it's, it's a question of, are you going to allow yourself get, to get sucked down with them? You know, or if they're stealing from you, you know, like you still have to protect your own energy. So recognizing that somebody has their own path and you have your path and realizing that if their behaviors or actions are going against who you are, who they're not adding to your life, but instead depleting you or your energy or causing even more problems, then your soul has to step up and decide what to do with that to protect yourself. It's a tricky one. It's a tricky one because especially for somebody like you who is so caring and who can see the best in people, which is a true gift, by the way, being able to see the best in people. But we have to be so aware of the practical parts too. That we are alive in a physical life and we don't want to we don't want to sabotage ourselves, I guess, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and that sometimes it can help too, of course, to have either a counselor or a coach who can kind of give you strategies to handle what's going on and help you figure out what the next best steps are. Sometimes it can help to have somebody like that give you suggestions. So hopefully that helped a little bit, especially because you're so cool. <laughs> that's so funny yeah um okay so yes pamela right we can care about people but not care for them we we don't have to save everybody tough lesson sometimes huh yeah okay Zena. yes you are stuck yeah I, a coach might help um give you some action steps um you might read my book if you haven't yet courageously you um, it's full of strategies to handle all sorts of things in life, and that could be helpful. So Rebecca, getting out of survival mode, connecting in with your soul is going to help. Self-compassion, doing things you enjoy and love to do. Uh, trying new things also helps. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff goes on in your, your heart area. And you are a deep lover too. You loved people very deeply. So you're very deep in there. So when you're hurt and when you're in pain, it is, it is, it is significant. So it's the showing yourself compassion and allowing yourself uh, the space and the time. But also, it's time now for you to move into that direction where you're doing things you love, things you want to do, things that are right for you. Um, and, and, kind of pushing yourself to do it if necessary, you know? So today is Tuesday. You might say, okay, tomorrow I am going to um, go walk in the woods. Okay. And then when the time comes, right, what happens, right? We go, oh, I'm not really in the mood. Go do it anyway. Okay. Because that's going to get you in a different environment and you're going to feel better. That's definitely going to help. Hmm. You know, how I told somebody earlier to meditate on angel light. Um, it's communication uh, color and also I, I can't even remember what that stone means but I know it's the one that person needed I want to actually give you like turquoise so Rebecca I would suggest you meditate with turquoise I cannot recall what turquoise symbolizes what it stands for but for some reason turquoise feels really good for you so that might be fun to check out that might help you get back into yourself again 
and stop feeling like you're drowning even. Now, with that too, remember that even though when we're in survival mode, the energy beneath us and around us is still moving. It's still getting us ready for our next part. Okay, so it's not like the energy is stagnant. It's not like we're stuck and nothing's happening. We feel like we're stuck, but underneath everything, the energy is still moving, getting you ready. So that will help too. Hmm, I wanna look up turquoise right now just to see, definitely. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah, it can be something else, can't it? Um, yeah, I'm still on pain meds for migraines. Oh, I hope that goes away soon. Okay, Adriana, let me talk to you for a minute. What time is it? Oh, 9.05. I'm talking too much again. Oh, this is what happens. Next week, I will not be here because I'll be traveling, literally driving. Um, but I will let you know when I'm back. Um, Adriana, I feel like something is missing in my life. When we feel like something is missing in our life, that means that our soul is calling us. It means our soul is wanting us to uh, reconnect, strengthen that connection, to get into that mode of feeding your soul, I'm going to say. So what makes you happy? What do you like to do? What do you do when you feel most like you? What are you doing when that's happening? Uh, usually people feel like they're missing when they feel like something's missing. Uh, they'll say, I don't know what my purpose is. I don't know why I'm here. I don't know what I'm supposed to be doing. And then our human mind goes to a big grand purpose, which we don't need. Our purpose here may be something as simple as connecting with other people and smiling at everybody we see and saying hello. That could be our purpose. Spreading joy. That's a pretty good purpose. Okay, so for you, Adriana, there's definitely this sense of you, and I know you've been trying to figure it out in your mind. You've been kind of weighing the pros and cons. Should I go here? Should I go here? What should I do? I know you've been doing that. Um, instead, I might suggest that you look at this situation with some curiosity, kind of like waiting for the answer to bubble up, if you will. You're kind of just expecting to find out what it is, like curious, what is, you know, and not going, I wonder what's missing, because then that means we're focusing on what's missing. Instead, it's more a feeling of expecting. I'm expecting I'm going to be shown where I need to go next. Ooh, that might be a good intention. So I expect I will know where to go next. I expect to be shown what else I need to add to my life or what will give me joy and, and uh, meaning. Uh, that would be really good. And especially, now Adriana, um, your soul has, I want swirls with your soul. I love when I get a swirl soul. And, and I'm seeing a lot of silver in it. And silver to me does mean a spiritual connection as well, just like white and purple, um, silver. But the silver also means to me purity of spirit, purity of the soul. And I would expect that there have been times in your life you've been rather naive and trusted people when you shouldn't have. Um, people who have the purity of soul energy, sometimes this thing everything everybody's like them especially when they're a kid you know everybody's like me so it's all good and then we get you know something happens bad or somebody uh, betrays us or whatever uh, so I expected that there's a lot of that that purity there with you and right and you've been taught to kind of you know as most of us have to figure things out when really again it's going to be a feeling thing so for you I, I'd suggest you just set that intention in motion, in motion of expecting things to come to you and keep your eye open for things that might be interesting for you. Definitely something, you know, um, take a class or something that you might not, not, um, <laughs> that you might not normally have done, you know, thank you, Debbie, recommending the book and the, the coaching. The coaching is amazing. Hi, Nancy. Yes. Okay. So everybody, I have talked a lot again, you know, once I get going and I didn't even answer all these questions that I copied down, but I love your questions. I love your questions and I love um, giving you some uh, guidance as well. And so I think I'll just do this next time I come back and we'll just keep talking about the soul and just bring all your questions and, and bring whatever you want. And I'll just give you guidance, intuitive guidance or soul readings or whatever, or color readings and see. So, yeah, we'll see. 
Yeah, my guide was on today. He had a lot to say, apparently. Okay, so if you're at all interested in my Reimagine Your Life retreat, definitely check it out. It's going to be so much fun in Lilydale. We're working on healing some of the past. We won't heal everything, of course, right? But we will heal, heal some of the past. We're going to work energetically. We're going to have fun with some dowsing and some crystals. So much fun, so much fun. And we're going to do a past life regression. Greg's going to do one with us. It's going to be awesome. I'm going to do some of these guidance things at night, uh, Saturday night that day and uh, we are just going to have a ball. So if you are interested in coming, check it out on my website, ColleenVanderZyden.com or BeCourageouslyYou.com. They both go to the same place and it's so much fun. And LilydaleAssembly.org, hopefully, hopefully the workshops are up. I will be live on Sunday um, talking about upcoming workshops if I know any more of them. <laughs> if I don't, I wasn't live this past Sunday because I didn't have any more information. But I should be this week. I got a couple things I can talk about. I can tell you the monks are coming. So I know that for sure. Okay, what else do we have? We might want to have a certain crystal or stone to meditate on. Yes, yes. Uh, so yeah, you know, maybe I should bring my my list of crystals with me and um, and then tell people what crystals to meditate on. Wouldn't that be fun? Great idea, Sam. Great idea. Uh, okay, so thank you so much for the stars, um, everybody. And thanks so much for joining me tonight. And I will not be here next week, but I should be here the week after, maybe. We'll see. I'll post it. You'll figure it out. You'll see me if you see me. And have fun connecting with your soul this week. Make a point of it. Breathe. Feel the love. Get in that flow just a few times a day. Make it a little habit for you so that you can get into that. Oh, we've got a star party started just as I'm finishing up. Oh, yes, it's Easter this weekend, isn't it? Oh, yeah. So maybe doing a live on Eastern Sunday may not be the best idea. Ah, well, we'll do it anyway. They can look at it later. Okay. Thank you guys so much. And if you were at the retreat last year, feel free to come again. It's going to be different than last year. So you guys have a fun week, and I'll see you later. Bye.